Welcome everyone. So, I've seen this Veritasium video about a giant circuit with a light bulb, a switch, and a battery. And in it, Veritasium claims that the light bulb will turn on immediately despite the cable being so long that light would take a second or half a second to do the whole trip. And well, I think he's wrong, so I'm going to try to explain why. And but first, we're going to see what he says, okay? Imagine you have a giant circuit consisting of a battery, a switch, a light bulb, and two wires which are each 300,000 kilometers long. That is the distance light travels in one second. So they would reach out halfway to the moon and then come back to be connected to the light bulb. Which okay, so here's the circuit, right? We have the battery, the bulb, and the switch, which is close to the, to the bulb and the battery. And we have a cable that's so long that, I mean, I'm not sure if it takes half a second to go <laughs> from the battery to, you know, from the battery to the farthest point of the cable or, or what, but let's say that it takes a second to go from here to here and to here, right? So one second, if it were, a, I don't know, a fiber optic, one second for the light to reach the bulb. And then the, the battery and the switch are one meter away from the bulb, shown here. Okay, so this is the circuit, okay. Which is one meter away. Now the question is, after I close this switch, how long would it take for the bulb to light up? Is it half a second, one second, two seconds, one over C seconds, or none of the above? Now you have to make some simplifying assumptions about this circuit, like the wires have to have no resistance, otherwise this wouldn't work, and the light bulb has to turn on immediately when current passes through it. But I want you to commit to an answer and put it down in the comments so you can't say, oh yeah, I knew that was the answer. Well, so my answer would be B, because as I said, right? Uh, well, I'm not sure what this means, actually, if it takes half a second to reach here, but I think the light bulb will turn on once the electricity has gone all the way through this cable. So, but only this, only from the switch to the light bulb. This other part of the cable doesn't matter. I will explain later. But... So I'm going to say one second, because from here to here is half. So one second, B. All right? Sir, when I tell you the answer later on. This question actually relates to how... So here he starts explaining about how electricity works. He starts talking about magnetic fields and... Right? Flow from one to the other. Electric fields? Well, and in this whole video, his idea is that here we have the the electric and the magnetic fields shown here with these arrows, and well, there's a there are theories and formulas that tell you that when you have these electric and magnetic fields that the power is moving in a certain direction, right? Which is shown, I think he shows it. Let's see. Here, okay? So, I'm assuming, well, one is the electric field, the other is the magnetic field, right? The blue and the red, and the yellow is the power. And here he explains that electrons do move through the cable, but move really slowly, which, all right. Okay, I'm looking for a point where he says something important. I think it's around here. It by itself has an electric field, but since no charges are moving, there is no magnetic field. Well, here's one of the first things where, where he went wrong in the final answer. 
He says very clearly, and this is true, okay, that for a magnetic field to exist, you need moving charges. So electrons moving. Otherwise, you only have an electric field. So the battery doesn't lose energy. When the battery is connected into the circuit, its electric field extends through the circuit at the speed of light. And this is also important, right? So, in a way, what he said here is that whenever there's a change in the circuit, like a battery is connected, that change spreads at the speed of light through the cable. Right? So the magnetic, uh, the electric field, in a way, would be represented by a voltage when we're talking about circuits. So the voltage will start traveling at the speed of light. Right. This electric field pushes electrons around, so they accumulate on some of the surfaces of the conductors, making them negatively charged, and are depleted elsewhere, leaving their surfaces positively charged. All right. And here is when he's talking that the movement is very slow. And here he starts showing his whole idea. Opposite okay. the motion of electrons, but this is what's making it happen. The charge on the surfaces of the conductors also creates an electric field outside the wires. And the current inside the wires creates a magnetic field outside the wires. So now there is a combination of electric and magnetic fields in the space around this circuit. So according to Poynting's theory, energy should be flowing. And we can work out the direction of this energy flow using the right hand rule. Around the battery, for example, the electric field is down and the magnetic field is into the screen. So you find the energy flux is to the right, away from the battery. In fact, all around the battery, you'll find the energy is radially outwards. Energy is going out through the sides of the battery into the fields. Along the wires, again, you can use the right hand rule to find the energy is flowing to the right. This is true for the fields along the top wire and the bottom wire. But at the filament, the pointing vector is directed in toward the light bulb. So the light bulb is getting energy from the field. If you do the cross product, you find the energy is coming in from all around the bulb. It all right, so here is his idea, right? The energy does not go through the cable, but goes through the field. And here I have the first let's say, question about this, and is how can there be a magnetic field if it's direct current, right? Because as far as I know, a magnetic field generates when there's a change in current. And here the current is constant because it's a battery, and so I don't know. But okay. It takes many paths from the battery to the bulb, but in all cases, the energy is transmitted by the electric and magnetic fields. People seem to think that you're pumping electrons and that you're like buying electrons or something, which is just so wrong. Okay, so with this, we can go with, to his final explanation. And Our giant circuit light bulb question. Well, after I close the switch, the light bulb will turn on almost instantaneously in roughly one over C seconds. So the correct answer is D. I think a lot of people imagine that the electric field needs to travel from the battery all the way down the wire, which is a light second long, so it should take a second for the bulb to light up. But what we've learned in this video is it's not really what's happening in the wires that matters. It's what happens around the wires. And the electric and magnetic fields can propagate out through space to this light bulb, which is only one meter away, in a few nanoseconds. And so that is the limiting factor for the light bulb turning on. Okay, so here's his answer, right? The, the energy travels through the magnetic and electric fields, and so the light bulb, because it's one meter away, turns on as if the cable were one meter away. I one meter long, I mean. And, well, here's where I have the problem, right? <laughs> How can it be? And so now I'm going to explain why. Okay, here we have a drawing board. <laughs> All right. So, 
the circuit goes like this, right? We have a battery, and then we have a switch, which is whatever, open or closed. Then here we have a super long cable. And then the cable turns back to the light bulb, right? I mean, which... I don't know. Let's make a light bulb, like so. Right? So anyway, the circuit is like this. And well, I mean, here there's always also the crazy distance, right? Okay, so this is the circuit. Now, so let's analyze the circuit. I'm going to tell you what I think is going on here. So we have, well, the switch now is open, so no current is flowing, and the light is off okay but here we have a battery with a voltage right so here is a positive side and a negative side and so with a circuit like this if you start to measure it we said that the cable has no resistance and so on so you would find that it has the same voltage everywhere in the circuit and only you would find a difference in voltage right here, right? Here would be a voltage, which would be the voltage of the battery. And so, to me, what this says is that the... I'm gonna use a color, right? The, the electric and magnetic fields... Well, the electric field is actually all around this, right? It's going all the way. And why is it black? It doesn't matter. It's flowing all the way through the circuit. And so the whole circuit is actually charged and affected by the battery. But the switch is open, so no, there's no flow of electricity. Now, so, um, what happens when you close the switch, right? So, in my eyes, right, what is happening is that at this point the electricity is obviously starting to move. You have here the electrons, which were kind of stuck because the circuit was open. Now that it's closed, they can go across the switch and reach the battery, which is what they wanted to do. And so they will start to move. But as it was shown in the video, right? This change in movement would be at the speed of light. So this one would start to move, this will allow this to move, and this will allow this to move, allow this electron to move, right? And so the electrons would start <coughs> would start a chain reaction moving and that effect would reach the bulb in one second, because it's the length of the cable. So that's when I think that I would turn on. And why I think that the fields don't really matter is as follows. Because when you have a circuit like this, right? As I said, you have the electric field, but if there's no movement of any electron, what magnetic field do you have? You don't have any magnetic field. So what I think would actually happen is once you close this, right, the electrons would start to move. Because there's an electric field created by the battery. And but they will start to move in this part of the cable, right? And also well and also in this part of the cable, around the switch, they will start to move. And so now that they're moving, what this would generate is a magnetic field. Right? This charge is moving towards the battery or whatever, 
they would start to generate a magnetic field and this would expand at the speed of light. So the bulb is one meter away and so the bulb and the cable around the bulb would feel that magnetic field in the time Veritasium says, right? In 1 over C. And that would create a small current because at that point we're doing an induction. Right? It's just like it would be to the bulb, it would feel like the circuit is something like this, right? You have the battery and the loop because the switch is closed. And here you have a light bulb, I'm going to draw it like this, and another loop. And so if there's a current change in this cable, this generates a magnetic field, right? That goes here. Here the magnetic field is changing, so a current will be induced and the light bulb will turn on. But that's what we're getting, right? It's like a transformer of just one loop in each side. And so, of course, that would be a very small amount of electricity. And so, the, yes, the light bulb would turn on immediately. But the thing is that I sorry, but this is a battery, and so it produces direct current. So as the charges start moving this way, right, the effect of the flow in charges starts moving. What would happen is that the electricity here would stabilize. It would no longer be changing over time, and so the magnetic field would die off because of that. And as the magnetic field dies off the induction in the other side of the cable stops and the light bulb turns off, right? And so, as the light bulb turns off, it would not turn on again, <laughs> right? Because there's no current flowing through the cable and there's no longer a magnetic field to induce any current in it. And so, Now, for the light, uh, the light would actually stay off for the rest of the second until the electricity actually reaches here, right? Until the the voltage change actually reaches here. Because you can think of this like before, as I said, we had five, well, the, the voltage here from the battery because this was open, and when you close it, that voltage would start traveling through the cable, right? Because, of course, if we had the voltage here, now it's closed. We had this point of here with a certain potential energy, right? And this here with a different potential energy. And that's why we had a voltage. And so if you, we close this one, and that change is spreading at the speed of light, you can think that. Now, although it's just a cable and there's no resistance or anything, that at some point you will, well, I'm going to say that here is a point we know, right? Here is half a second away from the switch. So after half a second, if you have a voltage meter here, you would actually see a voltage, even though it's a cable, because just for a, for a split second, right? But at some point, the voltage will be traveling this way because it's changing the voltage of the entire cable, the, the potential energy due to it being connected to the battery now. And so this voltage change would take a second to reach the light bulb, right? And after a second, we will have the difference in voltage in the light bulb. And that's what it would keep the light bulb turned on. Because now the voltage difference can no longer continue because the light bulb prevents it. And so that's why I think that, well, first this side of the circuit doesn't matter how long it is. So let's make it short. Right, I mean, this one can be just the single meter away. And this one is the one that light would take one second to go around the right side. 
And so this is what I think it would happen, right? When the circuit is, is open, there's no flow. So there's only a magnetic field. That magnetic field generates a voltage, right, across this, this switch produced by the battery. Let's say the battery is 5 volts, right? So here you would have 5 volts. I don't know, not only 5. That's okay, 5 volts. And through the light bulb you have 0 volts. Right, because here you have negative potential energy and this side you have negative potential energy, right? This have you have like the positive potential energy. And here you have the same positive potential energy on both sides, so you don't have any voltage through the light bulb. So everything is turned off. Then when you switch this, you turn this voltage into zero. In the switch, right? And of course this will generate a current going rushing to the battery. But as we said, this, 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 in this circuit there has to be the, the 5 volts somewhere still. And those 5 volts are actually traveling all the way through, through the cable to the bulb. And so what we create here is a, a sort of alternating current that generates a magnetic field. The magnetic field can interact with the other cable because it's just one meter away. And that can generate a very small, you know, like, I don't know, 0 0.000, let's say, volts or something. <laughs> One. Or whatever, you know, what matters is actually the current, because it's a hypothetical circuit, so who cares? But the thing is that that induction would generate some voltage here, right? Uh, let's say a greater than zero voltage. And that would would light up the bulb, but just for an instant, because once this magnetic field, once this voltage is no longer here, but it's here, far away from the bulb, now this current is stable, and so it's no longer generating any magnetic field, and that means that the light bulb turns off. And because the voltage is again zero, the light turns off. And now, at some point, we'll have the voltage here, right? The five volts will be all the way at the other side of the cable. And so once you... And so the light bulb will be off, and it will only turn on again whenever the electricity, the current, or this this voltage change, sorry, this voltage change reaches here, and we get the five volts on the light bulb. So this is the idea. So now this would, of course, be negative. So this is how I see it. Okay, because I mean. What Veritasium said to me sounds, I mean, incorrect. And so, if he's so certain of what he said, I have another answer for him. I have another question, I mean. This question goes like this, right? We have the same circuit as he did. Let's remove everything. Okay, so a question for Veritasium, right? We have the same circuit. But now the switch, instead of being here, I'm going to put the switch. I'm going to put the switch all over to the farthest part of the circuit. So half a second away from the bulb. Right? Now, this switch now is closed, so the light bulb is on. And my question is, what would happen if I 
open the circuit right here. If I open the switch. <laughs> right? Because <laughs> the light bulb was on. Because there was electricity flowing. And the switch is far away. So, a, you, you know, what would happen? Will the light bulb turn on immediately? Half a second? One second? I mean, with my reasoning, it's obvious, right? It's half a second. Because that's how long the change of the voltage would take to go from the bulb to the switch. But with his idea, I don't know. And so, of course, if, if opening this switch makes the light bulb light up in I turn off in half a second then what happens if it's off and you turn it on does it take half a second or you know one over C because to me it takes half a second with most cases <laughs> to change the state of the entire circuit so I don't know. What do you think? Am I wrong? Is Veritasium wrong? Let's see what you all think and, and I'm actually intrigued, but I think that Veritasium is wrong because and as I said, it's not completely wrong because there's some energy that actually reaches the bulb at that speed, but it's not the actual you know power. He was talking about power all the time and how you receive power through fields, but I say no, you receive the power through the cables. You can receive some power through the fields, but I mean, it's a very small fraction because you need to be either very close to the field, right, to the electric field, or like in a transformer or something like that. I mean, but a single cable one meter away cannot transfer the full power of the battery. It can just sense it, at most. So that's my answer. Okay. So, let's see what you all think. And if Veritasium even sees this video. <laughs> and what he says. Alright. Well, thank you for listening. Goodbye.